Airbus, a much later born company, has surpassed Boeing and become the top aircraft manufacturer in recent years. So what is its secret weapon? What kind of strategic technologies is it using to win this race? And how is Boeing going to respond to this? We will find out in this video. Well, the secret technology being used by Airbus is probably not so secret or uncommon to most people. In fact, it has existed for 40 years so far. What I'm talking about is the cockpit commonality architecture between Airbus's aircraft. Cockpit commonality refers to the standardization of cockpit design, controls, and interfaces across different aircraft models. This concept was pioneered with the advent of fly-by-wire or FWB technology. A 320 aircraft was the first commercial plane to incorporate a digital FBW system. This system revolutionized flight control by simplifying the piloting process. In an FBW system, pilots' inputs are captured by sensors and relayed to flight control computers. These computers then process the inputs and command hydraulic actuators to adjust the control surfaces accordingly, ensuring the aircraft responds to the pilot's directives. Also, these flight control computers are governed by a set of written codes known as control laws. Starting with the A320, all subsequent Airbus models share these control laws. For instance, adjusting the pitch corresponds to a G-force demand, maneuvering the side stick affects the roll rate, and using the rudder changes the side slip angle, among other functions. This ensures a consistent response across different Airbus models, regardless of size or aerodynamic properties. While there are slight variations in handling, for example, a 321 may respond more slowly to commands than a 320. These differences are minor and can be quickly mastered by pilots. Airbus's fly-by-wire aircraft comes with an operational benefit, which is a standardized cockpit design that leads to uniform checklists. The layout of control levers, buttons, and other components is consistent across all Airbus fly-by-wire models. Airbus has standardized the side stick position relative to the pilot seat adjustment across all its aircraft, simplifying the transition to different models for pilots. For example, a pilot accustomed to the A320 could easily adapt to the A350's controls within minutes. At the core of Airbus's fly-by-wire system is the electric centralized aircraft monitoring ECOM, which oversees all aircraft parameters. In the event of a malfunction, ECOM provides pilots with a straightforward emergency checklist to manage the situation. This standardization in emergency handling in the ECAM's display format across all Airbus models enhances operational simplicity, regardless of size or engine count. The ECOM is designed to track and display procedures for dealing with failures, and its usage concept is uniform across all Airbus models. As for the flaps, Airbus has standardized the settings across its fleet as Flaps 1, Flaps 2, Flaps 3, and Flaps Full. While the actual degree of flap extension varies between models, the settings are universally named, making it easier for pilots to switch between different Airbus aircraft, such as from a 320 to a 380, without having to learn new flap setting names. The primary advantage for pilots flying Airbus aircraft is the streamlined process of transitioning between different Airbus models. Traditionally, when pilots switch from flying one type of aircraft to another, they must complete a type rating course. This intensive training, typically spanning 40 days, involves comprehensive instruction on the new aircraft systems and procedures, along with simulator sessions. Pilots must demonstrate their proficiency in a skill test conducted in a full motion simulator under the watchful eye of a type rating examiner. After obtaining their type rating, Pilots undergo line training with the airline, flying actual passenger flights under the guidance of instructor pilots. Each flight during this phase is evaluated, culminating in a line check performed during a commercial flight with either an instructor or an examiner present. Only after passing this line check are pilots cleared to fly with regular line pilots. This conventional pathway is both costly and time-consuming for airlines. However, Airbus has something that can change this situation, which is the cross-crew qualification, or CCQ in short. This is a unique term to Airbus, used to outline the differences in training programs from a given base aircraft to a specific different aircraft. Due to the similarities across the Airbus fleet, pilots no longer need a full-type rating for each transition, 
which can take up to six weeks. Instead, the CCQ offers a condensed course. For instance, a pilot with a type rating for the A320 can undertake a CCQ to become qualified for a 330 and vice versa within just seven days. While moving from the A320 to the A380, the longest CCQ program takes approximately 11 days. The duration of a CCQ is considerably shorter than traditional type ratings because during this program, the pilot is only required to learn the distinct features of the new aircraft type. For example, in the A320 to A330 course, the pilot is required to learn the A330's more complex fuel system. A notable highlight within the Airbus family is the pairing of A330 and A350, which are treated as a single type for pilot qualification purposes. When a pilot completes their type rating on the A330, they also automatically receive the endorsement to fly the A350 as well. This is because the two aircraft share a high degree of commonality, allowing for a seamless transition between them. However, to fly the A350 specifically, pilots do require some additional non-full simulator classroom training, which is aimed to address the minor differences between the A330 and A350, ensuring pilots are fully prepared to operate the newer A350 model despite their previous A330 qualification. This extensive commonality not only benefits airlines by significantly reducing not only the time but also the cost associated with crew training, the benefits are clear because when pilots are enabled to spend more time flying and less time training, resource utilization is optimized, which Airbus claims can boost pilot productivity by 2%. While seemingly modest, this percentage translates into significant savings given the tens of millions spent annually on crew training. The benefits also escalate thanks to the mixed fleet flying MFF in short. Mixed fleet flying allows Airbus pilots to be qualified to operate two different aircraft types simultaneously within an airline. For instance, many airlines have pilots who are able to fly both the A320 and the A330, sometimes including the A350, together. The key benefit of MFF for airlines is that it enables them to utilize the same pool of pilots across both short to medium and long haul operations. This capability not only enhances pilot productivity by up to 15%, but also reduces the need for a larger pilot roster and increases scheduling flexibility. The financial implications are staggering, with potential savings of up to $8 million per aircraft. Multiplied across a large fleet, these savings become a game changer for airlines, underscoring the economic advantage of Airbus's approach to pilot training and aircraft operation. Additionally, MFF also enhances the overall safety of operations. Long-haul pilots tend to have fewer takeoffs and landings compared to short- to medium-haul pilots, which can lead to a degradation of their piloting skills over time. With MFF pilots, get the opportunity to regularly switch between long-haul and short- to medium-haul flying, which helps keep their skills sharper and more current. So what about Boeing? Actually, this approach is also utilized by Boeing, but to a more humble extent, lacking the unified heritage of Airbus's lineup. For instance, the cockpits of Boeing's 737NG are nearly identical to the 737 MAX, and the 757, 767, and 777 cockpits are all quite similar. Unlike Airbus, this concept is extended much further, applied throughout their entire range of aircraft, from the smaller A320 to the colossal A380. It's worth noting that Boeing is making some positive changes in this area. Their upcoming 777X model is designed to share much of its cockpit architecture with the more modern 787 Dreamliner. This suggests Boeing is aiming to align the cockpit layouts of its future aircraft more closely. However, Boeing's most popular and long-running model, the 737, seems to be holding the company back in this regard. The 737's basic systems architecture has changed little since the 1960s, making it vastly different from more modern designs like the 787. Until Boeing is willing to move away from the legacy 737 family and adopt a more unified cockpit design across its commercial aircraft, Airbus is likely to maintain a distinct advantage when it comes to cockpit commonality between models. This advantage could continue to serve Airbus well and may help them continue to win business in the years ahead.